Hello, my dear friends and family. I wish to welcome you all to our timeline video for the Rat Knight Rimworld Universe, also known as the RKRU for short. Throughout this video, we're going to be discussing the events that take place throughout our RKRU timeline, as well as the shared universe that is currently spanning across three series. So let us begin where all good things begin, in the beginning with our Logging Empire series. On the 11th of April, May in the year 5500, Birch Nielsen founds the Stardust Logging Company, and thus kickstarting the Rat Knight Rimworld universe. Birch, of course, is fueled by his ambitions for wealth and a better life, and to achieve those things, he is willing to do anything. Birch would not be achieving his dreams by himself, though. On the 7th of Jugust of the same year, a gentleman named Happy Oak joined him at the Logging Company. Throughout the Logging Empire series, Birch and the other loggers would employ and enslave several other members. One such notable member was young Larry Sapling, who was being hunted by monkeys and then was saved by Happy Oak and Birch. Happy Oak even became quite close with young Larry Sapling, becoming something of a father that the boy never had to him. Unfortunately, though, the logging empire was raided by pirates and thromboians alike on a regular basis, and on December 2nd, 5501, during one such raid, Larry Sapling was killed. Happy Oak was heartbroken. However, it was also during this time that Tree's father, Oliver, slash Olive Branch, was enslaved by Birch and the other loggers. For quite a while, though, it was business as usual. We would always just cut down trees and then sell the trees. Until about a year later, on December 4th, 5502, when the Thromboian, known as Bacchus, raided the Logging Empire with her tribe. After she was defeated in battle and then enslaved, Bacchus ended up becoming the greatest crafter that the Logging Empire Empire had. As an enslaved Thromboian in the Logging Empire, Bacchus constantly yearned for her freedom. On April May 8th, 5503, Bacchus actually rebelled against the loggers and ended up having a gunfight in the warehouse against one of them known as Kibby. Unfortunately though, of course, her rebellion was quickly extinguished. It's worth mentioning as well, Birch, the leader of the Logging Empire, has several family members who are part of the pirates who continue to attack the Logging Empire. One such example is his own daughter Carol raiding us on April May 12th, 5503. But you know, for a long time, the Logging Empire was a bustling little town, a city even, and they were doing so well. They had so much wealth that Birch ended up having to build a bank to store it all in to keep it safe. As our wealth grew, so did the massive raids that came to attack us, but along with that grew our trade with our colonial powers such as the British, the French, and the Prussians. The slaves all Olive Branch and Bacchus had fallen in love, and then on the 9th of April, May 5505, Bacchus became pregnant with Olive Branch's child. However, unfortunately, not long after, on the 2nd of Jugus 5505, the two of them would end up breaking things off and were no longer together. It was also during this summer that the Logging Empire experienced several massive raids from rebels and thromboians alike, signaling to the loggers that their days were numbered, but of course, this did not stop Birch, as all he cared about was money. Not long after, though, on the 3rd of September, 5505, Bacchus gave birth to a beautiful baby girl that Birch ended up naming Tree. We should probably pay attention to her. I have a feeling she's going to be very important later on. By this point, Birch had an ungodly amount of wealth, and the problem with that being a massive wealth like this attracts bad attention. Thus, unfortunately, on the night of December 7th, 5505, we encountered the largest pirate army yet. As the loggers were standing their ground against this massive pirate onslaught, Bacchus was hiding with her child tree. Feeling extremely sympathetic to this young mother and her newborn, Happy Oak began making his way there to then give her his rifle so that she could protect herself. Just after leaving her quarters, Happy Oak would then encounter the pirate king outside who was leading the raid and managed to shove a spear directly through his heart just before being shot down. Thankfully though, his sacrifice enabled Bacchus and Tree to finally escape the Logging Empire. As Bacchus and her baby escaped the Logging Empire, the founder of the Logging Company, Birch, lie in the icy cold snow in the dead of night, bleeding until he eventually would succumb to his wounds. 
That night, an extremely injured Happy Oak would manage to pull together enough strength to get up, gather up some money, get on a yak, and begin to leave the area before any pirates noticed him. We would then see Happy Oak survive in the wilderness on his own for a few months, gathering back up the strength to try and retake the logging empire. He wouldn't be able to do this on his own, of course, so he began traveling to different colonial powers to look for men to recruit and or buy, but after purchasing slaves, he would then grant them their freedom after defeating the enemies. Oak returned to the logging empire on the 14th of April, May, 5506 six with two slaves and a thromboian child. The logging empire was still infested with pirates. Luckily though, after several battles with said pirates, they ended up taking back the logging empire. Happy Oak would then finally be able to bury his old friend Birch in the town square in a silver sarcophagus. After granting the two slaves their freedom, the child Vercott ended up staying with Happy Oak as he had nowhere else to go, and at this point he did begin seeing Happy Oak as a bit of a mentor and a father figure for him. The two of them traveled for years before finally finding a beautiful place to settle and call home on the 4th of April, May 5510. They had the wonderful idea of creating a mining empire where they could live out their lives in luxury but also take care of the poor and the beaten down on the planet. Unfortunately though, they had no idea that the land that they were settling in was actually controlled and owned by the British Empire who did not take very kindly to them setting up an empire within their empire. A British raiding party attacked Lercott and Happy Oak, defeating them both in combat and unfortunately kidnapping them both, taking them as slaves to their very own mining empire. And that, my friends, concludes our RimWorld Logging Empire series. Now, of course, between the events of Logging Empire and the Alcohol Empire, quite a few things happened. The most notable that I would like to mention was the formation of the RimWorld Marshal Service on December 3rd, 5518. But of course, just keep in mind, we hate the RimWorld Marshal Service, but even before this, as separate colonial powers, before merging, they were enslaving and killing all the same. The RimWorld Marshal Service thought that other races on top of other things were the source of all problems, thus they treated them extremely poorly. They also came up with laws against drugs and alcohol, which also brings us into our next series, The Alcohol Empire. So let us not dilly-dally, let's jump on into this series. On the 6th of April, May 5528, the dynamic duo of Bacchus and her daughter Tree found the Silverhorn Brewing Company. The two of them were driven out of their homes by the Rimworld Marshal Service and their absurd prohibition laws. So of course they done the only thing they knew how. They came to the mountains to brew a little bit of liquor. On the 2nd of Jugas 5528, a refugee named Saburo offered to join them here to which they accepted and he would also eventually become the lover and husband of Bacchus. Sometime later, on the 12th of December, 5528, Shortus ended up joining us after we completed a quest taking care of a cassowary for a local settlement. Throughout this time as well, we were constantly being raided by the Rimworld Marshal Service as well as Thromboians and other settlers. During one such raid on the 12th of April, May, 5529, we ended up defeating our friend-to-be Blitz in combat. Eventually, on Jugas 2nd, 5529, we ended up having a waster named Reek offer to join us here, to which we accepted of course. He eventually became known as Uncle Reek among the other bootleggers for his kind and caring nature. It was also during this time that Tree cheated on her wife known as Cass with Shortus, then finally cementing their love together. A quick note as well, we have yet to actually meet Cass throughout any of our series. At one point, everyone was attacked by a massive man-hunting group of rats, forcing them to all stay inside the brewery and eventually during this time Tree and Shortus would do some stuff and Tree would end up pregnant with her very first child. On the 3rd of April May 5530, Tree and a few others met with the president of the Red Cove settlement nearby and peace talks began. Sometime later a paramedic bandit known as Hack was injured nearby and if we rescued him he would actually join us here so we sent out a caravan to rescue him. After returning home not long after that, Tree 
went into labor, and then on the 12th of April, May 5530, her baby was born. She ended up naming her baby girl Oakley after Happy Oak, the man that saved her and her mother from the logging empire. Later on, on the 8th of August 5530, a group of bandits actually brought Shortus's long lost daughter Lucky to Silverhorn Mountain, adding yet another member to our growing family. Even though peace talks were ongoing, we were still seeing several settlers raiding us. During one such raid, we even ended up defeating our friend to be Ninjack in combat, and we ended up recruiting him. As peace talks with the Red Cove settlement were going extremely well, it was around this time on the 1st of April, May 5531, we experienced our very first Thromboian Death Squad attack. Because of this new massive threat, on the 5th of April, May 5531, Tree commissioned a massive wall be built for their protection. But the very next day after the wall was being built, we received a massive raid from the Rimworld Marshal Service. They actually had sent a sheriff named Ed along with them to lead the charge. Unfortunately as well, it was during this battle that Sheriff Ed ended up killing good old Uncle Reek. Literally the very next day after the battle, Tree went into labor with her second child. Finally though, on the 8th of April, May 5531, her son was born and she decided to name him Reek after her friend who perished. Later on the 5th of Jugas 5531, we had our very first encounter with a Thromboian chieftain known as Tilagneg. Eventually, we did defeat him in combat though, and after he was defeated, we took him prisoner where he would await before we would then execute him. But of course, our trouble still did not go away because a month later on the 5th of September 5531, we ended up receiving a raid from the Rimworld Marshal Service where we would see the very first instance of Constable Morris. The constable was specifically assigned to Silverhorn Mountain to try and take down the bootleggers. They would unfortunately encounter him him again during an ambush on our trade caravan on the 5th of September 5532, one year after the massive siege. It was during this raid as well that unfortunately the constable managed to shoot and kill Lucky, who was the daughter of Tree and Shortus. Unfortunately, it did not stop there though, as on the 14th of September 5532, he ended up setting up a massive siege against our bootleggers once again. Luckily though, during this battle, our allies, the Red Cove Settlement, came to our aid, and we eventually defeated the Marshals and Constable Morris here. We ended up capturing a Marshal Sergeant from this battle, who actually told us of a item stash nearby. However, after arriving and defeating the guards, we ended up realizing there were no items. These were actually slaves the Marshals had taken. Enraged by this, after they returned home, Tree ended up executing the Marshal Sergeant. Hack did not exactly agree with this decision and he ended up leaving Silverhorn Brewing Company and our bootleggers. On the night of December 6, 5532, the Rimworld Marshal Service ended up sending another massive raid. However, this time they ended up sending a captain by the name of Hawthorne. No doubt, due to us defeating Constable Morris on the battlefield, they decided to send in the big guns, air quotes. Luckily though, we were able to defeat the captain and send him back fleeing with some of his men that managed managed to survive. Unfortunately though, Bacchus's husband, Saburo, was killed during the battle. This massive attack prompted Tree to call in reinforcements to plan an attack on the Rimworld Marshal Service. She got a local chief from a Thromboian tribe and the president of the Red Cove settlement, and they began plotting this attack. The attack actually commenced on December 15th, 5532, where Tree and their united forces would attack the Rimworld Marshal Marshall base. Unfortunately though, after a long and difficult fight, they were defeated. Tree and the remaining rebellion ended up fleeing back to their respective homes. And that is how our Rimworld alcohol empire ended. But of course, even though that was the end of the Alcohol Empire, the battle still ensued behind the scenes between series. There were several battles going on between the rebels, the coalition essentially of Thromboian tribes, the settlers, the bootleggers, who all kind of became one working together against the Rimworld Marshal Service. Now real quick, before we end up moving on to the Mining Empire, I do want to give a quick shout out to our Discord member, Lelby22, who actually came up 
with the name for our planet during this series. The planet's name is actually called Degum. I think I'm pronouncing that right, though I definitely may not be. But now we move into our most recent series, the Rimworld Mining Empire. On an unknown date in winter of 5542, Captain Hawthorne takes a squad of soldiers and Happy Oak and Lercotte, who are enslaved by the Marshal Service, into the northern mountains to begin setting up a mining operation to support the Marshal's war efforts. They finally arrive in the area on the 1st of April, May 5543, and begin setting up their mining base. Now, not only were they setting up the mining base, though, they were setting up connections with each other, and by that I mean that Vern and Sev fell in love, and even the captain himself fell in love with Konar. On the 9th of Jugus, 5543 though, we began seeing just how cruel the Marshal Service really was when, on the same day as Captain Hawthorne's wedding, they executed several refugees outside. Things were normally business as per usual, we were always under the hill mining and building and things like that, up until the point that we were actually discovered by the rebel leader. Ninjak. After easily defeating Ninjak and his raiding party, though, Sev then went into labor to give birth to her and Vern's child. Finally, of course, on the 5th of September, 5543, the baby was born and they decided to name him Severn. But the mining empire was no longer just a resource base. The marshals were actually using it as a bit of a base of operations for offensive attacks against rebel encampments as well as caravans and things like that. On one such occasion, with a rebel raid against the mining empire, Ninjak returned with several elite warriors from the rebel faction who attacked us. Unfortunately, this did not work out in their favor. Ninjak was captured and stabbed to death in the prison by Captain Hawthorne. At one point, we ended up having a Thromboian slave named Noprix fall in love with a soldier named Beyonder. Bit of an issue with that though, as it was against the law. This ended up in Noprix's death by execution, as well as Beyonder being enslaved himself. At one point, Konar, Captain Hawthorne's wife, went into labor with their child, and on the 15th of April, May 5544, the baby was born and they named her Slate. Around about a month or so later, we ended up receiving a raid of rebels. Now, this raid was actually led by Chet, who was the fiancé of Lucky, who was the daughter of Shortus and Tree. And nonetheless, Shortus also came himself to lead the raid. Unfortunately for them, though, the raid would be defeated. Chet would actually be killed in combat and Shortus would be defeated by Captain Hawthorne and taken prisoner. Though he would not stay at the Mining Empire very long as he broke out very shortly after that and returned back to the rebels. Later on during a conflict with some rebels we ended up using toxic gas weapons against them which actually marked the first time that we know of in the conflict that toxic gas weaponry were used against either side. And then on December 1st 5544 Captain Hawthorne rewarded Vern with the title and rank of lieutenant for his valiant efforts during this battle. It was also around that time that Shortus had finally returned home with his daughter Oakley to tell Bacchus and Tree that Happy Oak was still alive. At a certain point, the Mining Empire soldiers had enslaved two Thromboian warriors as well as a rebel named Scott. They would be very important later on. On the 3rd of April, May 5545, a massive Marshal Service caravan came came to collect resources from the Mining Empire. Unfortunately, they were ambushed by a massive group of Thromboians. After this battle took place, the Marshal Service still needed their resources, so we sent Beryl and Scott in our newly created helicopter to drop off the resources. Unfortunately, though, on their way back, they were actually shot down by rebels. Lucky for them, however, they did survive this explosion and then finally made their way to the town of Dover, where they would assist the Marshal service during a siege against the town. Unfortunately, though, Shortus would arrive nearby, begin shelling the town. Eventually, he ended up capturing Beryl and Scott. With everyone now believing that Scott and Beryl were dead, the mining empire was basically business as usual. We were kidnapping and recruiting nomads that came to visit. Our two Thromboian slaves, Frit and Trog, also had a secret love relationship. On the 15th of September, 5545, Hawthorne and a few other soldiers 
soldiers go to a nearby town that is actually being liberated by another martial captain by the name of Mitchell. Unfortunately, during their time there, Captain Hawthorne actually got hit by an explosion from an RPG. However, he did end up surviving. A little bit across town, though, Norman was actually storming a rebel control building, and within the building, he ended up finding Scott, who stated that he had been held hostage by the rebels. After returning home, Captains Hawthorne and Mitchell were both resting, of course. However, after recovering, Captain Hawthorne began making biofuel for bombs out of the corpses of our fallen enemies. He decided that he was going to bomb a local Thrombolian village. After arriving at the Thrombolian village, he forced several mortar shells onto our slave Trog, who he then sent into a crowded community building and forced him to detonate them. And then after that, Captain Hawthorne and Lieutenant Vern ended up bombing the city. Obviously, back home, all the slaves were extremely upset by Trog's disappearance, so led by Scott, who turned out to be a double agent for the rebels, they all went straight into the dining room where Captain Mitchell was, and they beat him senseless, took his gun, took him outside, and executed him. Luckily, though, they were able to hide Captain Mitchell's body, and no one was any the wiser. On the 4th of April, May 5546, the slave miners end up finding a massive ancient structure within the hill. The captain and the soldiers end up venturing into this, and it turns out to be an ancient Thromboian civilization. Unfortunately, though, the place is infested with massive monstrous bugs, and they get attacked by these bugs. Unfortunately, Konar is very injured, knocked to the ground. They are able to actually get her out of there, but by the time she gets home, she ends up succumbing to her wounds and they end up having to bury her. Because of the structure they found within the hill, Captain Hawthorne and Lieutenant Vern decide that they're going to venture throughout the other section of the mountain through the mines that the slaves have been digging to make sure there are no other ancient structures. Unfortunately, after arriving, they do find Captain Mitchell's body that was hidden away by the slaves. A fight breaks out. Captain Hawthorne and Lieutenant Vern get the better of Lercotte and Happy Oak. They end up imprisoning them where they would await execution. Just before Hawthorne is is able to execute Happy Oak, though he is shot in the shoulder by none other than Oakley. And then, Happy Oak and Bacchus are finally reunited after several years. The rebels are now shelling the mining empire as the battle is going on outside, though Scott rallies the slaves on the inside and then a battle ensues with them. Hawthorne ends up coming outside where the rebels have actually captured his very own sister. She begs him to surrender, to which he accepts, so he goes inside to let the slaves and Scott know that they're going to be turned over to the rebels. The slaves don't like the idea of Hawthorne getting off scot-free as they see it, so they kill his sister, shoot him to the ground, and leave him in the warehouse with a bomb that's about to explode. Of course, if you watch to the end of the Mining Empire episode, though, you realize that Hawthorne was just extremely burned by the bomb and not killed. But the series ends with the other marshals being taken into custody, those that are still alive. The fates of the children are unknown, though it is possible, of course, that the rebels also took them into custody to try and help rehabilitate them within the future. But my friends, we have finally come to the end of our timeline video. I hope you have all enjoyed and more or less I hope this has kind of cleared some stuff up or at least gave you a bit of a recap of, well, the entire three series that we've done so far and the extended universe uh, thus far, essentially. I love you guys very much though and I hope to see you very soon in a brand new series that I will hopefully have out in the very near future. But I love you guys. Goodbye.